uh, Pastor Wilkerson will be a blessing if you can come this Monday night. You can come Monday and, uh, and Tuesday. I know all the messages will be encouragement, or if you can just come on Tuesday. Um, there's uh, three pre preachers that we'll have uh, speaking on Tuesday. I know that will be a, a blessing uh, to you uh, if you can make it. Anyways, uh, back to our lesson here. Uh, if you uh, need a copy of the lesson, by the way, we should have uh, the next two pages there, 11 and 12. We have those if you wouldn't mind handing those out. And uh, then we have a couple of guys that uh, take those and start handing them off. And uh, we should already have 10, uh, uh, 9 and 10, uh, but uh, 11 and 12, uh, we just turn it off. Uh, but anyways, uh, real quick, like we've been talking about the series when bad things happen to good people, and uh, the lesson that uh, uh, lessons, and I'm sorry, that uh, Job has learned, especially here in this uh, particular uh, uh, passage that we're looking at, uh, lesson number 14, coming forth as gold, and uh, that's something that we're looking at here. Um, one of the lessons that he learned was, uh, I am weak, but he is strong. Uh, and Job realized that. Uh, uh, you know, he, uh, he had some weaknesses, but uh, God was able to uh, make up those weaknesses uh, with God's strength. And then uh, uh, he also learned the lesson that Lord, the Lord can do anything. Amen? Uh, the Lord can do anything, meaning that uh, he can do the impossible. Nobody else can do anything, meaning he can allow us to go through some things, uh, just like he did Job. And, and uh, uh, we have to uh, learn some things as we go through uh, all of that. Then, of course, uh, uh, we uh, learned that Job wanted to uh, see the Lord through all of this. You know, uh, many times we uh, need to get a, uh, a better glimpse of who the Lord is and, and uh, see the Lord in a different light. And sometimes the Lord has to bring us through some things in order to see Him uh, in a different light. And then we talk about how He said, I want to be accepted of the Lord. You know, uh, um, I would much rather be accepted of the Lord rather than of man. Uh, just uh, in my Bible reading this week. Here, uh, I came across the uh, scripture where um, I, I think it was uh, uh, Paul, the apostle, or either Paul or Peter, uh, said we ought to obey man, uh, God rather than man. And uh, uh, they were told, oh, you can't preach here anymore in this city. And, and they went ahead and still preached in that city. Amen. And uh, sometimes we, uh, uh, we have to look for the Lord's acceptance, not, uh, not man's. And the Lord's, acceptance, uh, Lord's approval, not man's. And then, of course, uh, uh, he, uh, another lesson that he learned, I will pray no matter what I am facing, you know. Um, we can pray for those that uh, uh, maybe are uh, persecuting us or falsely accusing us. That, that's what he did, uh, of course. And, and uh, we ought to learn to pray, of course, to the Lord. Uh, but he learned to pray for uh, those that were persecuting him. And we ended up page number 10 there, uh, Roman numeral 6, uh, there toward the top of the page. Uh, if you uh, don't have that page, raise your hand. We'll get that to you as quickly as possible. Uh, but uh, there's a couple of folks here that don't have that. Uh, uh, so uh, get that to you as quickly as possible here. We'll look at uh, uh, Job chapter number uh, 42 and uh, verse number 11. Uh, Job chapter number uh, 42 and verse number 11. And uh, we'll have a word of prayer. Then we'll get right into uh, the lesson here tonight. Joel chapter number 42 and uh, beginning of verse number 11 it says there when uh, then, I'm sorry, then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all uh, the, the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. And uh, we're going to be looking at uh, here, you are never alone, amen? You are never alone. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, all right? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. And we thank you and praise you for, uh, uh, Lord, just uh, allowing us to be able to worship here. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts here tonight. Lord, that you would help us to uh, be attentive to uh, what is said and, Lord, uh, Lord, I pray that you would uh, uh, just do a mighty work in our midst. Lord, help us to realize some of these lessons, Lord, as, as we uh, look at this uh, lesson here tonight, look at the scriptures, uh, Lord, that Job learned, and Lord, help us to uh, ever be mindful of these things, Lord, that we learn. And, and uh, uh, 
Lord, I just pray that you be glorified in all that's said and done here tonight. Bless our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to I point out something real quick here. Uh, there's a song. Uh, you can turn your hymnals to it real quick if you want. We're not going to sing it, but I want you to notice the words. And uh, uh, I remember one time uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, had wanted to sing this song, and uh, uh, it was kind of, uh, I don't know how they wanted to sing it. It was depressing. Amen? Um, and... Uh, I just, I'm not the type of person that wants to sing a song that's depressing, amen? Um, this song is not to be a depressing song, you know? Um, you know, like uh, the person wanted to sing it, like, No, never alone. No, never alone. For my, I, I, I was just thinking that, amen? You know, the howling dog, Amen. He's not going to leave us alone. And sometimes we uh, uh, we forget that, and, and we have to be reminded of that. Do you think about all that Job went through? All right. Remember, uh, uh, Job went through some bad things. He really did. And Job had felt alone. I mean, he really felt alone. You look at some of the things we're going to be seeing, uh, seeing some of these things here. We know from the scriptures that he felt that no one cared for him. And what he was going through. That's that's what he perceived. That was his perception. Because remember, he has his wife that's telling him, "Hey, her Scott to die, Job. You know, we just I want to see this happen. Come on." His friends are like, "Job, you have some sin in your life. You know, that must be what's going on." So he felt like you know he was just being uh, uh, you know attacked or whatever. And he felt, boy, nobody else cares about what I'm going through. Nobody understands what I'm, I'm dealing with, uh, how I feel. And uh, Job stated numerous times what was in on his heart and, and, and what he felt. And we see here from Job chapter uh, uh, 42 and verse 11 that there were others that were there in his corner to encourage him and comfort him for what he had gone through. I don't know where these friends, you know, I, I don't have the explanation. The Bible doesn't tell us where all these people were at before. But look with me again what it says there. And there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. And he ate bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And the Bible doesn't tell us where they were at. Boy, I kind of wish the Bible had said, hey, they were on a trip. Hey, they were busy during that time. The Bible doesn't give us a timeline either of all the chapters that happened here. You know, uh, some of these things could have happened in just a matter of a few weeks. You know, uh, uh, some of it, I, I, uh, I tend to believe that it was uh, uh, a little bit of time, maybe a few months. But the Bible, you know, they didn't have the technology we have today. They didn't have the, you know, the ability, you know, uh, uh, we can jump in a car and uh, we think nothing of it. We'll drive 10 miles. We'll drive, you know, 30 miles. We'll drive an hour, you know, uh, 90 miles in an hour and a half. You know, just fly right over there and come right back. We think nothing of it. Back in that day, uh, they had the right horse. Uh, they had to ride a camel, uh, maybe a donkey. Amen. I don't, anybody ever ridden a donkey before? It's, it's not comfortable. Amen. It, it's it's a bouncy ride, especially if you get you know if it's walking, it's fine. But as soon as it begins to you know trot a little bit, forget it. I I don't I don't like riding that kind of thing. Amen. Just walk. Amen. Just walk will be fine. But Guess what? If you're walking, guess what? You might be able to walk. Grandma might be able to walk faster than the donkey. Amen? Let's just be honest. So you think about, uh, you know, the, the friends, maybe maybe they, uh, uh, you know, were on a trip. I don't know. The Bible didn't tell us. They didn't have the telephone, you know. They didn't even have, you know, uh, two cans and a string. 
Amen. You know, now we uh, we can, are able to pick up the phone and uh, you know call somebody. I, I was just talking with a, a pastor yesterday, and I said, "Hey, uh, you know, come, I want to encourage you to come to our meeting." And and uh, he made the statement. He said, "You know, for, for the Alan, he said I really appreciate you calling me, and I, and and consistently calling me and just encouraging me." You know, we need that, amen. Because you know, Job didn't have that technology just to pick up the phone and or his friends be able to pick up a hey, Job, how are you doing? Hey, I saw on Facebook the other day that you were going through some bad things. I saw that you lost everything. You lost uh, all your source of income. And, and I want you to know I'm praying for you. I'm in your corner. Amen? That, that technology was not around. And so because of that, Job had focused upon his misery. And that he didn't, he didn't see that there were others that supported him. I want you to know this with me uh, back in Job chapter number 6. Job chapter number 6. Notice some of the things that he says here. Job chapter number 6. And beginning in verse number 10. Job chapter number 6, verse number 10. It says, Then should I yet have comfort, yea, I would harden myself in sorrow, let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should hold? What is mine end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh of brass? Is not my health in me, and is wisdom driven quite from me? To him that is afflicted, pity should be shown uh, from his friend, but he forsaketh the fear of the Almighty. It's like, hey, you know, I, I should be receiving pity. Uh, you guys should be, uh, you know, saying, hey, I'm, we're sorry, Job. We're so sorry you're going through this. We understand. Instead, his friends are like, hey, you got sin in your heart. You know, there's something hidden. There's, there's a reason why God's doing this. Remember, God had allowed it, but all these things happened to him because of, of Satan. He had felt deserted and abandoned by his family and friends. You know, you think about this. A wife, you know what? Those of you that are married, you understand your spouse, by the way, better be and should be your best friend. Amen? They ought to be the one that you can, hey, let's, uh, let's spend time together. Or, you know, you can share what's on your heart. There are things I can share with Mrs. Naomi that I won't ever tell you about. Amen? Why? Because she's my friend. Amen? And there are times that she's like, hey, I just want you to know I love you. Boy, sometimes that just, all right, hey, that's encouraging, amen? But not Job's wife. Remember, Job's wife. Well, Job just cursed God and died. That's the best thing that's going to happen to you. Well, wait a second. The very person that should have said, hey, Job, I'm in your corner. I'm on your side. I, I'm here for you. She's like, oh, you'd be better off. I, I'll be better without you. you know? I'll be better off without you. Wait a second. No, my wife is all the time. She's like, no, you got to remember, you I, you can't die until I die, right? And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I can't promise that, but I'll do my best. <laughs> but you know, here, Job felt, uh, he felt abandoned. And turn with me, uh, look at Job chapter number 7, and pick it up in verse number 4. He said, when I lie down, I say, when shall I rise and the night be gone? And I am full of tossings to and fro until the dawning of the day. I'm going to stop there for a moment because we're, we're, we're going to look at a couple more verses here yet. But you, ever, you ever had something you're going through and you've lost sleep over it? Man, a lie. There's been some things that have happened uh, uh, before uh, I was in the pastorate as a youth pastor. Even you know, before I was a youth pastor, there were things that I lost sleep over. Things that I, you know, when I was a youth pastor, there were things that I lost sleep over. Now that I'm a pastor, there's more things that I lose sleep over. So me, you. Right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, there, there are things that we lose sleep over. Why? We didn't think about them, don't we? Think, oh man, 
I know there's been been things that people have gone through. Uh, I know I lost some sleep over uh, Billy Nelson uh, breaking his femur bone. <coughs> there are times I, I would wake up in the middle of the night and say, Lord, would you provide for them? I, I, Lord, I don't know where they're at, how they're doing. Lord, would you just help them? Lord, I don't know how Brother Otis is doing as far as uh, pain. <laughs> the painful thing. Lord, help him. He's going through this. Lord, help Brother Jake. He's working today. Lord, help so sister so and so, brother so and so. Amen. Why? Sometimes we lose sleep over things. And I think of this. So with Job, you know, he he was dwelling on all that he was going through, and he this is how he felt, and and he was just you know saying, hey. This is what, what I feel like when I lay down. I, I say, when shall I rise? You know, and, and the night be gone. And I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. Boy, can you imagine? He, he felt as if, you know, uh, you're, you're, when you've gone through something, you just feel like, you don't want to change your clothes, or you don't, I mean, just kind of, it almost leads to depression. Amen? You ever felt that way? Can you imagine what Job's going through here? How his mind is maybe kind of playing tricks on him, you know, well, I'm it, I, I'm, I'm going through this, I, my, my skin is broken, it's become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are, are spent without hope. I, you know, can you imagine he's saying, uh, I, I go day by day and there doesn't seem to be any hope. Verse number seven. Oh, remember that my life is wind. Mine eye shall no more see good. You know, I've seen people go through some things and think, oh boy. I'm never going to see the light of day ever again. You know, they're going through some dark valleys and they don't think they'll ever get to the mountaintop again. You know, think about a valley. Valleys, uh, things do grow in the valley. Amen? But they're not very long most often. Valleys are, are very brief and then pretty soon you're going back up the next hill. Amen? Sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through some of these things to help us to realize where we're at. Job, of course, he, he shares or further expresses his disdain uh, in Job chapter number 7 and verse number 15 and following. Notice there. It says, So that my soul chooseth, uh, chooseth strangling and death rather than my life. I loathe it. I, I would not live always. Let me alone, for my days are vanity. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? That thou shouldest visit him every morning, and try him every moment. How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone, till I swallow down my spittle? Can you imagine? I don't know, boy, sometimes I get thirsty. Amen. Great right about now. <laughs> but could you imagine saying, you know what? I feel like I, I can't even get a drink of water. I, the only thing I, I'm worthy of drinking is my own spittle. Well, that's pretty depressing. Amen. <laughs> but you have to understand, this is how he felt. Remember, he's got his wife saying, curse God and die. His friends, hey, you must have some sin. That must be the reason why you're going through these things. Otherwise, you wouldn't have this problem. He's going to, uh, through all this, and, and this is how he saw his suffering. This is what he envisioned. But you know, many times Satan will try to make you feel that you're alone. He'll try to do that. He'll try to make you think that you're the only one going through this, and that you're the only one that's ever gone through this. And if he can make you think that you're alone, you become vulnerable to his attacks. I'm so glad that 
Satan cannot possess us as Christians. Amen? But boy, can he oppress. He doesn't fight fair. You know, uh, a fair fight, you know, uh, uh, back in the day, you know, everybody, hey, keep it above the belt, you know, and, and uh, now, boy, they have, uh, what do they have, what's that, UFC fighting or whatever, and, uh, you know, it's like, you know, kickboxing and, and uh, all kinds of different styles all thrown together, and they're in an arena, and, you know, they're pummeling somebody uh, almost to death, amen? <laughs> back in the day, it was boxing, amen? And, you know, you know they'd pop somebody, and, and the referee would break them up if they would, you know, try to uh, punch more. Christians 
No, let me back up. Uh, you know, the, these verses here uh, are how you are not to, not the only one that may feel that way uh, that you do. Uh, you know, there in First Peter chapter number five, verses eight and nine, especially. But some Christians have said that they are the only one going through what they are going through. That no one else has ever gone through what they are experiencing. I, I've heard people say, Pastor Hallett, you don't understand. Nobody has ever gone through this. Okay, well, they have. Amen? And, you know, sometimes we think, well, my experience is very unique. Okay, I'll give it to you this. One, it's unique in that it's a different name than the other people that they went through. Amen? And I'll give it to you this too. It's probably a different face. Amen? But guess what? The problems are not new. You think about this. In 6,000 years of human history, you don't think your problem has not been repeated at least once? I know for a fact it has. You say, how do you know that, Pastor? Turn with me. Ecclesiastes chapter number 1. Ecclesiastes chapter number 1. Ecclesiastes chapter number 1, and notice in verse number 9. Ecclesiastes chapter number 1, verse number 9. It says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing. Where? Under the sun. Nothing new. That means the problems that you're going to. The problems that, that uh, you're experiencing, it's not new. You're not alone in what you're going through. People will forget scriptures like verse 9, and their reaction is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and verse number 10 and 11. Notice there. It says, is there anything uh, uh, whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It had been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. The problem is, we're, we have a, a bad case of uh, short-term memory loss. Amen? Amen? We forget that there are other people that have gone through some things that we've gone through. I'll be honest, you know what? I am very glad I live in 2000. And 18, even though I almost said 2019, but we're not uh, there yet. Amen. <laughs> 2018. No, I'm not going to try time travel either. <laughs> I'm glad to live in 2018. You know, there's uh, a lot of times that, uh, oh, this has got a low battery. I don't know if we can run this at uh, two, two batteries. You know, uh, with the uh, Make sure that this uh, gets new batteries each each time. There we go. All right, there we're back on back on uh, on, on place here. Oh, I forgot what I was where I was where I was going. Twenty eighteen. Oh yes, thank you. I air, yeah, we got air conditioning. <laughs> amen. Twenty eighteen. You know why? Because there were many years ago, and then not too far in the back, uh, too far distant uh, past, but. Many years ago, there were people that were burned at the stake because they proclaimed Jesus Christ as the only way of salvation. There were people that were thrown into arenas to be attacked by lions, all because they named the name of Christ. They claimed the name of Christ. You know, sometimes we think, boy, I've got it bad, and then when you look back in history and realize, oh, wait a second, yeah, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have my, my entrails opened up and uh, had some problems there, amen. I want to encourage you, by the way, and this is uh, something I want to encourage all of you to do, you, you, if you don't have a strong stomach, don't read it alone, all right? Read it with somebody. There's a book called Fox's Book of Martyrs. 
Boy, it will cause you to appreciate our faith. Amen? And then you realize that some of the things that you may suffer, amen, aren't as bad. <laughs> and they, pay, they pale in comparison to what they had to endure. You know, sometimes we have to realize that we're not the only one going through this, and we, we uh, sometimes forget what others have gone through. But see, this is what the devil wants for you to forget that you are not the only one going through bad things. He wants you to forget about that. He wants you to have a mindset to where, well, I'm just going to focus only on my problems and I'm not going to look at anybody else. You know what happens when a person is also in this mindset? I've never seen a person that is dealing with this kind of feeling ever go off and witness. It, it, it won't happen. Why? They're not going to tell me about anybody about Jesus because they're dealing with their problems. And they think, well, I'm the only one. Nobody else goes going through what I'm going through. And uh, they forget that there's a lost and dying world all around them. They forget that, hey, Jesus died on the cross for you, and he, uh, uh, you know, he saved you, and if you have salvation and you have nothing else, you have eternal life. Amen? That ought to be something you ought to be thankful for. Because there are some people, boy, their they're, uh, eternal destination is that place called hell. And boy, it's going to be an awful, awful place for all eternity. But you see the experience of Job losing his source or sources of income. is something that others have experienced thousands of years after the book of Job was written. How many have ever lost a job? Look around real quick, like. Look around. You're not alone. Amen? It's hard losing a job. I remember, boy, I tell you, I worked hard for this company. It was a trucking company, and uh, it was over in Menominee, and, and uh, I would work my tail off, literally. There were times that uh, uh, normally my, my shift was supposed to be from 4 in the morning to, uh, or 4 in the afternoon to 4 in the morning. There was a few times the day shift guys didn't show up, and there was still work that had to be done. So I stayed over until they got there. We're talking until about 6, 7, or 8 o'clock in the morning. You talk about dragging your wagon, amen? I'm like, oh, man, I'm beat. And uh, sleep until you know, an hour before I had to go to work is about what I did, amen? That was it. Boy, I remember the day I got called in, and, and uh, I I hadn't done anything wrong. It was just uh, uh, the person. I think it was the personality, and I, I was wrong in calling my uh, my boss a name, and I shouldn't have done that. I, I'll, I'll I'll probably say that was maybe the reason why I got fired, but. Boy, that was an awful feeling when he's like, okay, you're done, clear out your truck. In my mind, I'm like, man, I, I kept, you know, this business going and trying to do my best. And, and there were people, that I, literally, there were, there were uh, I know of at least five companies that offered me cash under the table to move their trailers late at night so they didn't have to have somebody come and move their trailer. They were like, look, you're already there. We'll give you this money. It's yours. I'm like, no. Because in my mind and in my heart, hey, I'm working for a Christian. This is a Christian company. I want to have a good testimony, not only to the unsaved, but, of course, to my boss. And I remember when I got fired, I, I tried to talk to my boss, the guy that owned it that was a Christian, and I said, hey, can I talk to you? And he said, nope, have a nice day, have a nice life. Click, and he hung up on me. I was utterly devastated. It was a hard thing to walk back, or not walk, I didn't walk back home. I drove back home, walk into the building here, though, here at the church, and and my dad was like, what happened? He said, oh, no, you didn't. I said, yeah, I did. He goes, I, I 
can't believe they fired you. I said, I don't understand it either. Well, I tell you, that was a hard thing. But guess what? I'm not the only one that's ever been fired from a job. Amen? There's some people that have been uh, laid off. Boy, that's hard. You're expecting to be paid, and, and then all of a sudden you get laid off, and, and they say, well, we're not sure when we're going to rehire you, but good luck to you. Amen? <laughs> Wait a second. They got bills. Amen? Got mouths to feed. Bill, Joel, he wasn't... He wasn't the only one that lost the source of income. And guess what? You won't, you won't be the last one. Job was not the only one to lose loved ones, especially children. I'm not going to ask this question to... I'm not trying to be emotional here tonight. I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to pull up old feelings, all right? First of all, how many have ever lost a child through miscarriage or stillbirth or anything like that? I want you to look around. You're not the only one. How many have ever lost a parent? Look around. You're not the only one. How many have lost a brother or a sister? Look around. You're not the only one. You see, you have to realize you're not the only one going through these things. Job had ten children. My wife and I have talked about this. It's hard for us to imagine losing one child. We've lost four. But we did not lose them all at once. All right? We've talked about different people that we've read about, you know, maybe somebody had an accident and they lost, you know, three, three children, you know. Recently there was a, a canoeing accident up in uh, uh, Lake Superior, I think in the Apostle Islands area. And the father and the three children, if I remember correctly, and the mom was the only one left alive, the, the father and the three children died. I cannot imagine what that mom is going through, that, what that wife is going through. Could you imagine Joel? You know, something that's not mentioned in that, in that passage. We talked about this before. I do believe that there was some, you know, daughter-in-laws and maybe some son-in-laws that were there. Because we know all ten of his children died. That's pretty hard. But you know what? Somebody... Losing a loved one is not unique. Amen? It's something, it's one of the things I mention in almost every single funeral that I do. I mention that death is one of the most common experiences of every single person that ever listens to my voice. Throughout the history of mankind, others have lost loved ones. Job was not unique in having health problems. How many have had some kind of health problem in the last year? Look around. You're not, you're not the only one, amen? You know, I, uh, oh my stars, it's time. Uh, we're going to have to, uh, let me finish this thought and then we'll have to stop because it makes the time. Um, I remember uh, seven years ago, breaking a rib. It was the first bone I had broken in my lifetime. Seven or eight, whatever it was. Anyway, seven, eight years ago, somewhere in that neighborhood. That was, that was painful. Amen? And then I not only broke it, but then I recracked it. I kept coughing and I kept recracking. There was actually two of them, two ribs. I kept recracking them. Then uh, one Sunday morning, I was coughing really hard, and on this side, I hear a crack. I'm like, oh! And I knew that pain. I was like, oh, I broke another rib. When the doctor took the x-rays finally, uh, I finally, okay, I finally went into the doctor, right? I was afraid of what he was going to tell me. 
went away there and he x-rayed, you know, these and he goes, wow, he goes, you must have broke these like about six times. I'm like, what? And he was looking at the, the x-ray for the ribs on this side. And he says, see this right here? This is how, I, how, how many times I can tell you've cracked them. He said, this has been at least six times right here. He says, on this side, you've cracked this rib on this side at least three times. I was like, what? What was happening was I kept recracking them from my coughing. That was painful, amen? But you know what? I know some people that they just, if, if, I mean, if they just kind of lean on something, their bones are so brittle they can crack their bones. That's, that's pretty awful, isn't it? You see, Joel was not unique in having health problems. Because of time, I'm going to stop right there. I want you to bring that lesson back with you next week. And we'll pick up there uh, in our lesson. Uh, uh, right there in the middle of that point, and uh, uh, pick up right there. There we go.